What's good? It's Larry O and I'm back in the studio again with some really dope and simple ways that you can create automation clips for third party and stock plugins inside of FL Studio. As you may know, automation can get confusing sometimes, but I'm gonna show you some really dope tricks that help you speed up your workflow and they'll bring dynamics to your songs and your beats. So drop a comment down below if you have any questions or suggestions and make sure you turn that bell on, subscribe if you get me. I started this beat really quick. It's really super simple. I just grabbed a sample from the Cymatics Cobra pack. It's free if you want that pack. I'm gonna drop a link down in the description. You can go grab that for free. You get me. Um, we're gonna hop into this real quick and I'm gonna play a little bit of the beat so we can catch a vibe. We'll start off really simple. In every audio sample, you basically have some quick automation options. This is really dope when you're trying to speed your workflow up and you don't wanna to go to the mixer and jump back and forth really quick. What FL Studio does is they give you two quick automation options for panning and for volume. So what you do is you go up to this little menu right here on the, in the audio clip, click that, and you go to this little automate section right here and you can click volume. So what we can do is drop that down here maybe create like an empty space for it. You can automate this and it's gonna automate the volume of that whole entire clip. So that's a really simple way to create an automation clip just for volume. Again, you can do that in the in the mixer as well. You can right click the fader. I try to stay away from creating automation clips on the fader though. I don't like it too much. I think it's way cleaner and easier to do it that way on the audio clip itself. Throughout the mix of a song or a beat, I'm constantly moving those faders around, tweaking little volume fixes here and there. So I don't wanna have to commit to an automation clip and, and have that be the final volume or else you'd have to go into the automation clip and adjust every little time you wanna adjust the volume, you'd have to adjust those. So I think it's way easier for workflow purposes to just create an automation clip that way if you need a volume change. Um, another cool way that you can uh, do some automation, let's say we wanna group like all of these drums together, right? Let's create a drum bus. And we're gonna highlight and select all of the drums right here and we're gonna route them to this drum bus. So go down here, right click, and route to this track only. I'm gonna take that drum bus and just make sure everything's routed. We're gonna play those. So now you can see that all the drums are routed to that one drum bus. So let's say we wanna put an effect on only the drums. We wanna leave the melody alone, but we want some sort of filter or something on those drums. Put all of your drums in a drum bus and then put whatever plugin you want on that drum bus so let's say we want to do i don't know some sort of eq filter right maybe we want to box the drums out like make them super boxy sounding let's just highlight a section so it repeats So that sounds pretty cool for now, really quick, simple. And what I would do here is go to that parametric EQ2, go to this little mix knob right here. Basically that's just like a volume up and a volume down knob on that actual plugin. So I would just right click that, create an automation clip. All right, so now all the way up means that that, that plugin is on, completely on 100% volume. So we're not gonna want that the whole song. So anytime you have dead space or whatever, and this is really important too, FL Studio, I think, has a couple of issues when it comes to automation, but there's a few ways around it. When you create an automation clip like this, make sure you put a zeroed out automation clip at the beginning of your song. It's gonna save you a ton, a ton of headaches, believe me. So I'll put a zeroed out automation clip there. Sometimes I'll even create a new one just to leave this and forget about it. I'll make this one unique. So now I know I have a zeroed out automation clip at the beginning of the song that way we don't have any issues now let's say we want these drums to start off on this filter right and then we want them to fade off and hit hard right on this one right here create a little point pull this tension knob up
and there's a ton of different ways that you can make that sound a lot cleaner than that that's just a really quick way to do it you can also throw a reverb on there you can box it out you could you could do anything you want like i said with stock plugins you can right click any any knob any button anything the possibilities are like endless when it comes to automation i'll show you guys how to automate a third party plugin one of my favorites is a plugin called fab filter micro it's really, really dope for filters. Whenever I want to like filter a whole beat, filter a drum section or a sound or anything like that, I usually go to Fab Filter Micro. But something really cool about it, this is a different way. Not many people know about this one. And it took me a long time to figure it out. Let's throw the Fab Filter Micro. And you can also use this on any other plugin that's stock. It doesn't have to be just third party plugins. But the thing about third party plugins is that you can't just right click. See this like low pass thing right here? I can't just right click that and create an automation clip with it. It doesn't run stock with FL Studio, so you're not gonna get that option. You go up to the top record button, right click it and select automation. Now I have audio here selected too, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna unselect that. So that way automation is the only thing selected. Now let's listen to it without any automation. Just listen to those drums. So basically I'm gonna want the automation to do exactly what I just did with the mouse. So the way to do that, turn the record button on. We're gonna go up here and find the next empty track. Let's start it right here. Go to the fab filter and let's start it around this point. Cause maybe I might want these drums to come in already kind of muffled and then we're gonna open it up from there. Any movement with the mouse, it's gonna pick it up and record it and save it. So now we can turn that record button off. The next thing that I like to do is because this fab filter still gives the whole drums uh, a certain sound, even if this low pass is all the way over here, there's still some sort of filter. So the next thing I'll do is right click, create an automation clip on that plugin itself. And then what we're gonna do is turn it off until the point where we know we wanted it turned on. So right there, and then again, we're gonna turn it off right here. Actually, right, let's go a couple more over, right there. So now let's turn the sample back on and let's listen to that. So there you guys have it. That's a few really quick and simple ways to create automation clips in FL Studio with third party and stock plugins. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Share this with a friend if you get me.